To the final part of the one-way one treatment, one-way analysis of variance. Since, now that you've found that the three gravitation constants G for the three materials are different, you're not quite ready for the Nobel Prize yet, actually. Because if you find out that three things are different and you run up to your, the managing director of your company or your university, I think I'm going to have the Nobel this year. I found out that the gravitation constants are different. Then uh, I th I'm pretty sure if not your manager in your research institution, then at least your manager out there in your industry, in your company, will ask you, yeah, that's fine, you found out that three different things are different, but can you tell me the story of those three different things? Which is largest? Which one is different from which one? I mean, there is a natural post hoc question to ask when you compare many things jointly. Then, of course, I, I, do, I do claim in the outset that it's interesting, also scientifically interesting and practically inter interesting in the business, to be able to make this test of comparing everything in, in one shot, like I did before, three things in one shot. However, it doesn't remove that it still is interesting to ask more specific questions following the overall question. And you would have to summarize the story about what's going on. You could, for instance, have a post hoc hypothesis. That could be something like, are two specific means equal to each other, for instance? Or if I'm going to estimate the differences between the means to say that, that the gold uh, is uh, so much higher than the platinum or smaller or whatever it is. If I'm going to estimate those things by the averages, of course, it could be nice to put confidence intervals on those estimates, exactly like we did some weeks ago when I only had two groups or one group. It can be done. It's called post hoc comparisons when we are in the multi-group or analysis of variance and over framework. Here's the formula for a post hoc confidence interval. Look at this formula. And compare it maybe earlier. Earlier we had, uh, for instance, a formula saying, this was chapter seven, we would have a formula saying that almost the same but there was a P in the formula, like this, for the pooled variance across two groups. This, was the, this is the two-group expression that we were taught back in chapter 7. This is almost the same formula. And if you sort of, the only thing that you might be a bit uncertain about is this one, and you have to think about this one, because the S squared in our case is the mean squared error. Where we use, where we use information from all the groups, and that's the difference here. That's the extension compared to previously. Even though I'm now comparing group one and two, I am gonna use as part two, as information about variability, I'm gonna use information from all the groups. I'm gonna use the, info, the variability information from all the groups. The point being, in the two group case, in the two group case, the pooled variance is the same as MSE. So if we apply these analysis of variance techniques to a two group situation, which we can, we simply get the same thing as before. Or basically, what does the same thing? It means that the, a pooled T test is actually equal to the I should do like this, sorry for all the boxes. The, the square of the t-test is exactly the f-test, and the p-value is not only approximately the same, it's exactly the same. It's just to say that things, uh, sort of things match here. So we can do post hoc hypothesis testing, or we can do post hoc confidence intervals. I'm going to let you practice that on your own. Let's move on now to the next 